Amen. Good to see you here tonight on a Wednesday night. It's been a while since we've met in here and done a Bible study on a Wednesday night. But, uh, well, it's actually been since last year, so some of you I haven't seen since last year. So, uh, but anyway, uh, appreciate Matt uh, playing a little bit there. As you can see, we're uh, kind of messed up in here a little bit. We're trying to finish up on our remodeling project, the last phase of it. As you can see, there's a couple of big screens. They were just about ready to get that one mounted today over here on the right, and uh, they ran out of time. So uh, we still haven't uh, done the lights up above yet, and, uh, but they've already got the projection screens in, uh, or excuse me, the project projectors. And so they'll get uh, some more done tomorrow and hopefully Friday. So appreciate um, some of our guys from the Properties Committee that have been up here helping. Uh, they've had to mainly twiddle their thumbs, but they have been able to do a little bit. So um, just uh, pray that we'll be able to get some of this done and uh, we'll, we'll have services one way or another. And no, I am not going to preach from that tonight. If it's still here Sunday, I will. I'm serious. If it's right there Sunday, I will preach from it, okay? Okay. I'm not really interested in that, but anyway. Well, you know, do you all remember D. James Kennedy? He was from Coral Ridge uh, Presbyterian Church there in uh, Florida. And they had that huge high pulpit, you know, he was, boy, he was up there. Uh, so that would be what that would be like. But uh, anyway, if it's there Sunday, I promise I'll preach from it. But if it's not, I won't. All out what? Okay. Do what now? We're not going to move it? Oh. Whoops. Maybe I need to rethink what I just said. Because I was under the assumption that this was not going to be here. Oh my. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, I'll rethink what I just shared. Now I'll go ahead and do it. If it's there, I'll do it. So anyway, let me share with you some announcements. Um, on the back of the prayer list, the Young at Heart will be having their luncheon this next Tuesday, January the 17th. The chicken is provided. Bring a dish or a dessert. Sign up at the event table if you plan on attending. So we've had some good, uh, always have good response with our Young at Hearts. And I believe that Joyce Irving and her dummies are going to show up. Is that not correct? They're dummies. She knows that. She has names for them, but anyway. She started out as Joyce and Audie. Uh, Brother Matt and I knew uh, Joyce because she was in our church there at Skytook, and she learned the ventriloquism, and uh, so uh, she's very talented in that. So we're looking, you know, come and if you can, and uh, are part of our Young at Hearts, uh, come and be a part of that. Ladies Bunko. I looked it up the other day to find out what Bunko is, so I do kind of know what it is now. I was concerned. Uh, it sounded like bingo. And, uh, but anyway, that's January the 27th at 530, $5 per person. That concerns me as well, too. Yeah, it sounds like money has been exchanged hands. Uh, no, just kidding. But uh, sign up at the event table, if you would, uh, ladies, for that. You've already had one. Is that correct? You've had a bunko night? Okay. So you survived that one. Our second revitalization session is this coming Sunday at 5. And we had a great attendance uh, this past Sunday night. And I'll tell you, uh, the menu for Sunday night is pizza and salad. Okay? And the staff is not going to make the pizza. We're going to order it. So uh, we hope that you will come and, and, uh, and fellowship together. But uh, how many of you, be honest with me tonight... How many of you enjoyed what you heard this past Sunday night that were there? Okay, yeah, I, I had many uh, comments made uh, to me afterwards, and I didn't feel like somebody had a gun to uh, the, your back, that, and you said that when you said that you really enjoyed. So uh, we're going to continue that. We're going to do that through the month of January and uh, finish up the sessions. And then uh, probably this coming Sunday night, again, I... 
it, it's, it's a longer session, but the third Sunday night is a shorter session which, which would allow for more discussion from our congregation. So I may kind of limit you Sunday night so that we can just get through it, but then I promise you we will have a discussion where you can share. So take notes, and if you have some ideas about some things when we get into the ministry aspect, because he's going to get some into some specifics over the next two uh, second and third uh, sessions. So appreciate uh, you all being faithful to that and being a part of that, okay? And I believe that's all the announcements that I have uh, to share with you tonight. And uh, we will uh, go through our prayer list at the end. Uh, but uh, let's remember a couple of things before we, uh, as we go to the prayer. Um, Wilma Buzzard, who uh, uh, was a member of our church, she has not been here in some time because of health and everything. Uh, she passed away this past uh, Monday uh, at Grandwood, and I believe a service is going to be this coming Friday. I, did, I didn't have all the details in front of me here, uh, but uh, I think Worley Luganbuehl is doing the service or has the arrangements, so you might check online for that. There is a uh, viewing time, and then I think they're going to have the service, and I want to say it's Friday. Uh, so remember that, uh, remember the Buzzard family during this loss uh, for Wilma. Uh, Carol Hicks's son, Anthony, uh, let's continue to pray for him. Uh, Kathleen Hill and her family, we had uh, the service today for her brother, Steve Crawford, uh, over uh, at Cleora, so let's remember her family tonight. Uh, Jim Newman, 94-year-old uh, neighbor of Olin Hartman, uh, has the flu. Let's remember that situation. Marvin Smith's cousin, John Seagrest, has cancer. And then Michael Sharp, uh, a mass on the brain and uh, some bleeding issues in Joplin Hospital. So let's remember those tonight uh, along with some others as we pray. And uh, so bow with me uh, before we begin our Bible study tonight. Father in heaven, we come to you at this time where, Lord, we just uh, want to acknowledge you. We want to lift up your name. Uh, Father, we want to uh, express our confidence in you because you are almighty God. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for the opportunity to meet together as a church family. And Lord, I pray that as we meet here as adults tonight that you would also be with our children in our teen kid program and that you'd also be with our youth tonight father i also pray that you would be with our youth search committee and uh, they are uh, seeking uh, your uh, man for the position we pray father that you would uh, just continue to open doors and show us what we need and where we need to go uh, Father, uh, would you uh, meet every need that is in this uh, place tonight, every family that has come in here. Uh, we have situations, we have circumstances. And Lord, there may be some individuals that have come burdened tonight because of some family matters or because of uh, a situation in their own life. And Father, we can hide behind those things. We can hide behind a smile and and yet, Lord, we may uh, have a tremendous need that is uh, within our lives. So, uh, Father, would you meet those needs tonight? Help us, Lord, as we meet together to study your word. Uh, Father, be with those who are on line with us tonight. And, uh, Father, thank you for the way in which you're moving. Uh, we've uh, seen individuals come to be a part of our uh, church family in recent days. We have uh, others who are expressing interest as well. And Father, we always want to pray for those who do not have a relationship with Christ. And so Lord, uh, just meet with us here as we study your word and as we get into another one of your parables. We thank you, Father, for uh, the way in which you taught your disciples and the individuals who uh, would come around and listen to you. Father, teach us tonight, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. If you would tonight, turn to Luke chapter 6. I am trying to go through, not necessarily in any order, I'm not doing chronologically or uh, by virtue of where they are found in Scripture, 
the particular one that we're at tonight, Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. This is the parable of the wise and foolish builders. And there is a, obviously a similar passage that is probably more uh, known in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. That is the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, but this one sometimes kind of slides in there, and we don't necessarily, you know, uh, maybe notice it as much as we do the one in, in Matthew. So uh, we're going to look at this parable tonight. We're going to see what it is that uh, the Lord Jesus is addressing, and uh, we're going to look at some things tonight. Now, um, I have shared with you before when we have ever dealt with uh, one of these parables like this. Um, uh, I, I do have some knowledge. I, I wasn't, uh, I learned some things from my grandpa and my dad. My grandpa was a house mover, and uh, we uh, not only moved houses, but sometimes we would actually build foundations, new foundations, for when we would move a particular house to a new location. So my grandpa, I always got in on that, uh, sometimes I helped with the pouring of the footing. Uh, sometimes all I did was they made me uh, tote the, uh, uh, the blocks, the cement blocks, uh, to make up the foundation. And then there were a few times when I was in charge of making the mud or the cement, and uh, my grandpa was very picky about how he wanted uh, the, the mud in order to make the foundation. So. Uh, we never had any issues. I, I'm trying to think over the years in all the houses that we moved. We actually uh, cut a few houses in two, if you can believe, and moved half of one and then moved the other half and then put them back together. And that's always an interesting situation. And uh, so uh, have some fond memories uh, and not so fond memories. It was hard work uh, uh, moving houses, but... Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the experience that I had. So what we have here tonight in this parable, he, he addresses this problem that is going on very quickly. And it's found, the problem is found in verse 46. And it's the beginning of this particular uh, uh, short passage uh, where he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Folks, that is the crux of the issue that Jesus was talking to these individuals, not only his disciples, but people around. Now you, if you go back to the first part of chapter 6, you'll see that there is some, uh, some interesting things happening. Jesus being Lord of the Sabbath, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes were constantly on him uh, because he was doing things supposedly contrary to their uh, their laws, not necessarily, not God's law, but their traditions and things. There's the choosing of the 12 here in this particular passage, and then, of course, this is the Luke's version of, of the Beatitudes. But we do know that people had come to, um, uh, you know, come to Jesus. They wanted to, uh, uh, you know, they needed to be healed. Uh, there were situations that uh, that were happening with these individuals. And obviously there were people that were truly wanting to know more about the Lord, but there were people who obviously who were just there. It, it was the thing of the day. Hey, why don't you go with us? We're going down there to see this man named Jesus, okay? And uh, you have that today. You'll have people, if there is a mega church or something out there, uh, you know, a particular church that seems to be popular uh, sometimes uh, you know that you'll see a, a, a massive growth of people that come on Sunday mornings doesn't mean necessarily uh, that uh, that they're doing everything right just because they have large crowds but they are certainly doing something that is uh, getting the crowds to come but you know full well as I do we live in such a fickle society you can be on top of the mountain one day and the, then be on the valley the next and, uh, you know, just ask uh, former football players and uh, former uh, actors and actresses. They, uh, you know, they, they may be in the prime of their life, and the next thing you know, they're forgotten, okay? So you just never know. 
So there were people that were uh, following after Christ, listening to his teachings, but they really didn't have pure motives, okay? And so in verse 46 here, this passage of Scripture, he addresses the problem, and he says, you know, and there were people who were probably hollering out, hey, you know, Jesus, Lord, Lord. Uh, even saying it twice for emphasis. But Jesus is saying, listen, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Folks, that's a contradiction. And that's something that Jesus addresses in this passage of Scripture. Now, in the context of this uh, particular chapter, he is taught on how a good tree cannot produce bad fruit or how a bad tree cannot produce, produce good fruit. And folks, he's basically teaching about a heart condition. And um, conversion or change must come from within. Uh, the world and the people today who uh, are in this world have a tendency to focus on the outside. Okay? Now, I want you to listen. We're here in, Ma in Luke chapter 6. But I want you to listen to Matthew chapter 15. And just listen to these words for just a moment. These are Jesus' words. He says this. But the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. And those defile the man or the person for out of the heart comes evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witness slander these are the things which defile the man but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man and, and obviously the Pharisees and the Sadducees were on him again you know about not following the traditions of men and he was saying, you guys look on the outside. You're talking about cleaning up your life from an outside perspective. Turning over a new leaf. We have a tendency to do that at the first of the year. I, I mean, I'm going to do some things different this year. I've had people who say, you know what? I'm going to start going to church. In the new year, I'm going to start going to church with my wife. Well, that's good. I mean, that's fine. And I, and I pray that people will do that. But folks, just doing that is not going to change your life. Amen. Only Jesus can change a person's life. So out of the heart comes the evil thoughts and the things that uh, cause us to be unclean, okay? So that hits a nerve here, and Jesus is saying, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? He goes on. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly it's like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation and the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed and the ruin of that house was great. Okay? So, um, he wants us to see in this passage of Scripture that in this parable there is the wise builder, there is the foolish builder. There is the person who listens to God's Word. And, and folks, I, you've heard me share this before. The true listening within Scripture, true listening in the Word, has to have obedience with it. Now, you and I have heard things, we hear things all the time. But we don't necessarily apply it, do we? Uh, my children... When they were in my home, sometimes I would have to say, say things more than once for them to do what they were supposed to do. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you probably did the same thing. My, uh, my mom uh, probably at some times uh, was uh, exasperated by her youngest son uh, when she would say, you better go out and feed the dog before it gets dark. And I would procrastinate and wait till it got dark and then I didn't want to go out there. 
And she said, yes, you are going out there. That's your job. So it took a few of those instances before I finally began to realize, you know, I might ought to listen to her the first time, you know, and listen and actually obey. Because I can listen and we can, quote, unquote, hear the noise and not really listen, okay? So um, Jesus here is, is telling us that true listening in Scripture is uh, put together with obedience, okay? And see the difference. The man, he obviously built on the foundation, but he hears the words and he acts upon them. The other individual in verse 40, uh, 49, but the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly. He's not obeyed. One obeyed, the other one didn't. Okay, so I want you to understand that as we get closer. Now, in this parable, we see, first of all, a peculiar profession there in verse 46. Those he, are t he is talking to, Jesus is talking to, have an outward prof profession. They're saying, Lord, Lord, they're using that terminology, okay? They call him Lord, but they refuse to obey him. Now, listen to a couple of passages of Scripture that I found in the Old Testament uh, to help us with it. In, in Psalm 78, verses 34 through 37, listen to this. It said, When he killed them, they sought him and returned and searched diligently for God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the Most High God, their Redeemer. But they deceived him with their mouth, and they lied to him with their tongue, for their heart was not steadfast toward him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. I want you to notice that phrase, their heart was not steadfast toward him. They didn't have a solid foundation with the Lord. They, weren't, they didn't listen. They, they made some profession. They shared some words but they didn't follow it up with the change, with obedience, okay? Uh, listen to Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 here for just a moment. It says, um, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. He will raise up us, he will raise up us, us up on the third day I'll get that right in a minute that we may live before him so let us know let us press on to know the Lord his going forth is as certain as the dawn and he will come to us like the rain like the spring rain watering the earth what shall I do with you O Ephraim what shall I do with you O Judah for your loyalty is like a morning cloud and like the dew which goes away early there's no permanence there the dew doesn't last very long. Their dedication to the Lord was fickle, was fleeting, okay? And so we have these situations. And so what I think the Lord is saying here, that he can't trust, especially in this passage in Isaiah and probably in the Psalms passage, God can't trust what they're saying because they're merely offering lip service there's a difference between lip service and life service okay i want you to think about that tonight as we go a little further we can have or some have an empty confession but no genuine conversion and folks there are people today that have basically been put to sleep or basically have been coddled to think that they are okay that everything's fine. But folks, the Bible here teaches, not only, not, only, not only does it teach that we should hear and respond, but it also tells us in Matthew chapter 7, wide is the path to destruction, narrow is the way. Many go on the path to destruction, but few go the other way. So what does that tell us? It tells me that a lot of people in the United States today are banking on either their church membership or some kind of a decision that they made when they were young. Now, please, please hear me out. 
I uh, am not saying that, uh, you know, just because you made a decision when you're young and if you had some periods of time when you fell away from the Lord, uh, the key is, is did you come back to him? The key to is, the, is there a heart desire? You may, you may, um, you know, you may turn from the Lord and, and you may listen to the things of the world and you may be uh, gratified by the things of the world and you take, that takes your attention off of what God wants you to do. But folks, it'll be temporary. And so we need to understand that tonight. Uh, empty confession with no genuine conversion, folks is like the individual that says, hey, Lord, Lord, I'm going to call you Lord, but I'm going to forget what you've told me to do, and I'm going to do my own thing. I remember an evangelist, I won't mention his name, years ago here in Oklahoma. He would come to churches. I never had him at the church where I pastored, because I had an issue with some of the things that he did. But one of the things that he would do, especially on a children's night, he would present the gospel, and then he would ask the kids, how many, and he'd have them to bow their heads, and then he would ask them, how many of you would like to go to heaven? Well, guess what? <laughs> I know a lot of people that want to go to heaven, but it, it may be a little bit more than that just because you want to go to heaven. So what he would do, he'd ask, how many of you want to go to heaven? Well, he'd have 60 kids raise their hand. And he'd count every one of them. And then the next week in the Baptist Messenger, 60 professions of faith at First Baptist Church, Bristow, Oklahoma, or wherever it was. And I, I wonder today how many people are confused because of something like that that they did. Oh, well, I, really, I raised my hand in a, in a meeting Folks, make sure that you understand what Jesus is saying here, okay? They profess faith, but they don't possess faith. There's an obvious contradiction here in verse 46, and Jesus points it out. To call him Lord in your life is to obey him. The reason why I know that, listen to John. I, I read this uh, verse uh, the other day in one of my messages may have been a week ago this past Sunday. John chapter 3, verse 36. I want you to listen to this. I, I, I don't know that I caught this even when I shared it a couple of weeks ago. It says, he who believes in the Son of God has eternal life. Now, here's, here's John. He's got this typical uh, yeah, situation where he's going to give you one side of the story, then he's going to give you the other, okay? It's either this or that. There's no middle ground with John, okay? I mean, you're either with him or you're against him, Okay. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But here's the but. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Why didn't he just go ahead and say, and this is John quoting Jesus, why didn't Jesus just say, he who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not believe does not have eternal life? No. You see... You see, what it says here is that belief is synonymous with obeying. In this passage of Scripture, and, and re remember, when the term for believe there is the word for faith, and it's more than just an intellectual belief. It is a trusting. You're giving your life. You're trusting in the Lord. He who trusts in the Son has eternal life, but he do, who does not obey the Son will not see the life will not see life but the wrath of God abides upon him okay uh, James says it this way and I believe that he uses the words believe and obey interchangeably there listen to what James 1 says but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves you won't delude yourself if you're a do doer of the word from what I can understand from this passage of scripture. The delusion is to think that you can hear and not obey. You can't call Jesus Lord and not follow his commandments, okay? That's what Jesus is saying. So 
we have a peculiar profession here in verse 46. Now, in verse 47 through 49, we have an important comparison here. And there's only two points tonight. You'll be glad this is not a typical Baptist sermon. <laughs> we know this story, whether here or in Matthew chapter 7. And here's the scenario. We have two men here, and they are both building houses. Both of these men receive the same instruction about building their house. It is obvious that the instruction was to dig deep and build on the foundation of the rock. It is also clear that only one of these men heeded that instruction. And both of the men experienced the same storm. In this passage of Scripture, it says uh, the New American Standard uh, translated, translates the word torrent. It's actually little, literally the word river. So enough water came crashing on these, home, these houses, uh, at least that it certainly looked like a river, okay? So both of these men experienced the same storm, and the man who heeded the instruction survived, and the one who didn't suffered total loss, okay? I don't know any other way to put it. That's pretty simple. Okay, you can figure that out as well as I, but that's the situation that we have here, okay? Uh, so this is the comparison. In verse uh, 47 it is going to be a key because Jesus explains, he sets up this comparison in verse 47. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts upon them, okay, I will show you whom he is like. And then here's the comparison. He is like a man building a house, which dug deep, laid a foundation on the rock. The flood occurred, the torrent burst against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who had heard and had not acted accordingly is like a man who built it on the ground. He just put it on the top of the ground. Folks, there are, um, there are situations out in California right now where they have, some of these individuals have put houses in places that are not real stable. Because they don't usually get a lot of rain, but guess what? God's decided to visit them with some rain. And some of them are just sliding away, okay? There needs to be a deep foundation, okay? You know, some people need to be careful where, where they build, uh, you know, from a, literal stamping okay so verse 47 is important three three things here that we need to see you need to come to christ what does he say everyone who comes to me okay and hears my words and acts upon him you have to come to christ you have to hear his words and you have to act on them okay real simple so true biblical hearing is to hear and obey okay and that is, I believe, the key for us today in our uh, world. There's a lot of easy believism. Folks, Jesus offended people almost on a daily basis with his words. And the problem for us preachers today, and I'm putting myself in that boat, is do we, make, do we make the message palatable for people to go ahead and respond? Because if we tell them the truth of the, of, of the, the gospel, folks, the gospel is going to offend. It is not going to allow you to remain in your sin and be comfortable. You've heard me say before, um, I, I had a... a a definition of worship years ago that I really liked and and you could probably use it in reference to this worship is to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable for those of you who are disturbed when you come in God wants to comfort you but if you find yourself comfortable and everything's going you think everything's just fine and there's nothing wrong with your life uh, Lord the Lord's going to disturb it and by the way both individuals went through a storm if you think for a moment today that you're going to bypass storms you're not we're all going to have to deal with situations 
there are going to be times when things just beat up against us just like this storm here and and clearly what he describes here uh, a flood a torrent that burst against the house the one who listened to God's words and acted upon them survived maintained folks that's what God wants for you and I today he wants you to have more than just a profession he wants you to have a possession a possession of faith he wants you to do more than just say Lord Lord and just frivolously say that word or or whatever uh, folks it needs to be genuine it needs to be real so is it lip service or life service is it profession or possession now you've heard me talk about profession before I, profession uh, uh, certainly uh, th there, there's nothing wrong with a profession of faith but it is faith in Christ it needs to be more than words when I was eight years old I made I said some words but folks I didn't my life didn't change and it wasn't until I was 18 years old not only did I make a profession but I possess Christ in my life he saved me and he changed my life and I've never been the same since am I perfect no do I sin yes but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is my Savior. He is my Lord. The secret to standing firm in this difficult life is not the furnishings in the house or the color of the paint. The secret is in the foundation. Is your life built on a solid rock, on the solid rock, or sinking sand? Today I quoted the lyrics to this song at the funeral I'll do it again my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus's blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand folks that is a great hymn of faith that we need to say back to the Lord. Make sure tonight that you don't just profess something, but that you are possessing what Christ has for you. So the question tonight, what are we building our life on? Jesus' kingdom values or the bumper sticker philosophy of this world? You can find some cute bumper stickers out there. You can find some uh, cute little books out there that give you three easy steps to to being like Jesus or something but folks I can't find three easy steps to follow Christ is difficult and sometimes it even gets worse when the circumstances of life are go against us so do you profess do you profess faith or possess it Check your obedience gauge tonight. When God tells you to do something, how do you respond? When he shows you something out of his word, what do you say? Well now, Lord, nobody else is doing that, so why should I? Nobody else is that committed, why should I? I, I'm, I'm going to see if I can remember this. Uh, I was listening to, or I was reading Charles Swindoll uh, on uh, this particular passage of Scripture, and he was talking about the difference between going on a roller coaster that rose, you know, takes you up and down. And any of you have ever been on the Texas Giant down there at Six Flags? That thing will shake you to death. I love roller coasters. Um, the shock wave down at Six Flags. I sat there. It has the double loop-de-loop. -loop. All the other rides had multiple thousands of people wanting to get in, and there was no line on Shockwave, so I just kept riding. I rode six straight times one night. I love loop-de-loops. I don't like anything that goes this way, though. 
I get sick, but somehow I can do this. Well, he, he explained the difference. He said, when you're on a roller coaster and you get shook around and stuff, you know, you, you might get a little we, you know, queasy or whatever, but you know eventually that that roller coaster is going to take you back to that solid platform and you're going to get off of that thing. But what if an airplane that you're on does the same thing? And it starts looping and, and doing all these banks. Folks, one on one, you're having a great time going, wee! But on the other one, you're going, am I going to die? There's a difference, okay? Difference of perspective, okay? So when it comes to following the Lord, there, there is perspective, okay? There's listening to him. There's possessing what he has for us, okay? So uh, take this parable tonight. Let it be an encouragement to you. And I'm not, you know, my purpose as your pastor is not to cause you to question your uh, salvation or anything like that. Uh, if you have some doubts about it, I think you need to settle that. I had some in my life when I was young. And uh, so you need to have that no-so salvation. But truly, folks, uh, if we love the Lord and we're going to call him by his name, Lord, then we ought to be willing to obey. Okay? It's that simple. Okay? So remember that tonight and appreciate you listening. Let's... Um, Let's remain, the remaining time, uh, let me just share with you uh, a few other prayer requests. We'll pray and then we'll be dismissed. Um, let's remember our servicemen and women. We always should remember them uh, in, in their uh, willingness, their service, and what they're doing for us in our country. Our college students are basically back in school. Uh, remember them. I talked to a few of our college students while they were home. And uh, they need our prayers, folks. They really do. So you pray for them as they continue their education. And pray that the Lord will guide them and lead them uh, into some area, the areas that he would want for them. I know when I, was, uh, when I started my freshman year at NEO, I did not know that God wanted me to preach. I didn't know he had not called me into the ministry yet. But he, he maneuvered my life. He put circumstances and led me to Miami, Oklahoma, to a great Baptist Student Union director. And God had it all planned. And he also had my wife. My future wife was here. So uh, I think I got a pretty good deal out of it, okay? Uh, I came to know the Lord, got called to preach, and then found my wife. So can't beat that. Um, so remember uh, these college students, if you would. Our church family, we've got many Blevins tonight. The Boltons were here this past Sunday. Helen has good days and not so good days. Let's remember Jerry Brixey, Alan Bruns, uh, Brad Buckner, Mark Clark, Rita Cunningham, uh, Velma Geis, Lloyd George, Jean Grounds, Bertha Holden. Janie Hopkins has finished her radiation treatment, so we praise the Lord for that. And you pray that uh, uh, she will continue to gain more strength. Uh, Billy Hausman. There she is. Okay, I, had to, I knew she was here. I was just trying to find her. You move around. Some of you are really putting me in. Anyway, remember Billy tonight. Sandy Lemons was here this past Sunday with her husband, uh, Terry, and uh, she, uh, she has good days and bad days with her. She's actually got stage four breast cancer, but the Lord has just really uh, kept her, and she continues to uh, hang in there, so you pray for her tonight. Uh, let's remember Charlene Pritchard, uh, Joan Reeves, who was here Sunday as well. Let's remember the Schilt family as they continue to serve as missionaries in Malawi, Vera Trout as well. On the back of the prayer list, uh, we've had several of these uh, on a continuous basis. Uh, Larry Moore's uh, mother, Clara Bennett. We have uh, Gary's uh, brother, Brian Bishop. Continue to pray for him. Uh, Teresa Wormington's uh, dad and stepmom uh, have prayed for them in recent days. Um, trying to remember here. Uh, Steve Thompson's 
brother Mark Thompson is, uh, if I remember right, has, has had some good results. And uh, so these are some of the individuals that uh, we have been praying for on a continuous basis. Let me encourage you to continue to do so. And uh, there is a, about two or three unspoken prayer requests that I would just ask that you also remember. cannot give you details, but ask you to pray for some circumstances and situations involving some families within our church. And uh, if you would, please do so tonight. Any other things that, uh, any, any other prayer requests that maybe I'm, as far as I know, we do not have anybody in the hospital right now. And uh, that could change. But uh, anyway, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. We can do it. All right. So he's leaving. Where, where, where is he headed? Okay, not allowed to say. Okay, I understand. All right, so the McCorkle's son, Jesse, who go, they go to COS. Uh, he is with the Na Oklahoma National Guard. He's on a deployment, okay? And he'll be gone for over a year, possibly, 15 months, okay? So that's a, that's a tough situation, so let's remember that. Yes, ma'am. All right, so the family of Patricia Gordon, they're in Joplin, I believe. Is that what you're saying? Bill, okay. All right. All right, well, let's remember these and others and pray for one another. Uh, if you haven't accessed our uh, church app on your phone and you say, well, Brother Jim, I just don't know. Any, go to Miss Terry. Terry will help you. All you got to do is have a valid email address, and she'll get, help you get the uh, app loaded on your phone. And folks, you can access every one of us. You can uh, have pictures of us. You can blow us up <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> Can't throw darts at them, but you can uh, make us bigger. And you can pray for people. And, and it's a good, uh, I used to go through our directory that, that I still have in my, in my office. But this is so neat to be able to start from A and go all the way to Z. And if you have joined our church, we, uh, we're trying to keep, it's real simple to keep it updated. And you may not know somebody and you may hear a name and say, I wonder who that is. That directory will help you with that. So let me encourage you to do that and uh, be a part of that. So that can help you with your prayer ministry, okay? So again, thank you for that. All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Pray that we get this out of the uh, auditorium before Sunday. I'm not uh, open mouth, insert foot. So anyway, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Gary, would you come and uh, I don't even have a microphone. All right, just pray hard for us, okay?